Thank you for kind introduction and also I'd like to appreciate the organized committee and also thank you for coming. So uh, today I just uh, tell you some story on the flocking which I have been working on this area last five years. So, so first I let me tell you some introduction on the flocking. Maybe some of you might heard the uh, my dear the flocking may be first time, but of course when I before I walk on the flocking, I didn't know the flock what the flocking is. Uh, and then I show you some modeling issue and some analysis, and then some possible application of this flocking theory, and then conclude my talk. So uh, introduction to flocking. So uh, maybe in a minute you will see lots of pictures, but most of the pictures I, I took from the, uh, the Google image. So, <laughs> all right. So uh, more than 100 years ago, the first car uh, is supposed to call motor, motor wagon was invented by Benz, the German inventor Benz. And then 1903, the Wright Flyer, you know, the uh, Wright Brothers, they, they uh, accomplished their dream to fly. Okay, now, after 100 years later, we are testing so-called drive this car. So this project was, was being uh, testing now by Google company. So, so uh, no driver, but they can uh, drive. Also, it just uh, people just sit there uh, reading newspaper, but the, the car will take you to the, your destination. Okay, so this this will be realized maybe in a couple of years, I, I hope. And also, we know that the in in the military sector. Uh, just people uh, use the so-called unmanned area, area vehicle, okay? So no pilot in the plane. So this is what's happening now, but maybe sooner or later, you will see, this is the, the scene that I take from the, the movie, so-called Coca Report. So the car now are flying, of course, this is our imagination at this moment, but I hope it can be done in my lifetime. <laughs> and also, you see, there are many unmanned vehicles, they fly together, okay? Oh, wow. Now, and also recently there was a movie called Iron Man 3, at the, at the probably the later part of the movie, this Iron Man, uh, let's keep the our main character. So, so somehow, some we need to cooperation between this uh, amid this uh, artificial robots. Then, oh, so is this possible? Well, at this moment, maybe not possible, but more than sixty years. The famous mathematician Robert Wiener dream about this. So he, in 19, 1948, he published a book so called Cybernetics. He created a new branch of science. The cybernetics means, absurd, means the science of control and communication in animals and machines. So he dream about this. Then the question is, how can we do that? Okay? Maybe engineering mechanical level may not be possible at this moment, but we are mathematicians, we can dream about it. So so you can uh, so the question is design some sufficient efficient control protocol. Here what I mean is protocol is some mathematical model or algorithm for multi-agent robot and a main area of vehicle. Okay, so you need to think. Okay, so if you think about this, then 
Well, maybe if you want to uh, move on, let me just put a famous pot from Huacare. So the, here is the pot. Nature not only suggests to us problems, she suggests their solution. Okay? So think about the problem is how to control not so what they say, amend the air vehicle or amend robots to accomplish the some desired mission. So if you look around, say, you see there's a flocking of birds or a swarming of fish. So in my talk, this uh, swarming or hunting or flocking are the same meaning, okay? So I'm going to use this meaning without any uh, distinction. So what is the flocking? So here is the dictionary definition. The flocking represents some phenomena in which self-profound individuals, like this, using only limited environment information and simple rules, organize into order motion. So suppose you have disordered particles, or people, or it can be a robot, or whatever. By some mechanism, this disordered state move into change, change, change to disordered state. So I call that, this kind of mechanism I call flogging. All right. So, so now let me let me talk about some mathematical issues related to the flogging. So I uh, will talk about these three uh, topics. So modeling, okay, how to model some uh, particle system exhibiting this kind of flogging phenomena. And also once you have a model, then you have to as uh, you have to uh, study some well posing these issues, maybe if you are from PD community, you, you might be familiar with well posing Here, well posing means the existence of the solution and uniqueness and stability or continuous dependence of, on data. And also, I talk about the last time behavior. Remember, our purpose to model, to provide some model, is to uh, show the flocking phenomenon. So this uh, last time behavior is a critical issue because if you have uh, any model, but it doesn't, this given model cannot describe the flocking phenomena, then it's a wrong model, okay? <laughs> then how to make models? Well, there are many systematic ways to, to make a models. For example, if you are from the physics, then you can rely on the first principle of physics, like Newton's second law, to make a model. So one way to, to make a model is build up from the particle level, which is microscopic level, and then you, you, in, 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 as an intermediate level, you can, you can uh, use a so kinetic model. And then also from the kinetic model, you can derive some map, hydrodynamic, hydrodynamic model. So this is a so-called uh, top uh, bottom up approach. Okay? So it's more fundamental. You start from the particle level, and you build up the hydrodynamic model from the particle model. Or you can, of course, you can do the reverse way. You start from PDE, hydrodynamic model, and then based on that, you can figure it out what the kinetic model and so on. So this is called top-down model. But for some, so, but in my talk, I'll take a so-called bottom-up approach. So I'll tell you some pattern models, simple pattern models, and based on this simple pattern model, I derive so-called kinetic model, and then from kinetic model, I'll give you the hydrogen model. So it's more, more uh, consistent and also more logical in some sense. Because you don't need to guess. Of course, in, in order to make a particle model, you need to guess, but the, the simple to guess. So the particle model that I'm going to uh, talk about today is so-called Foucault's model. Uh, 
these two people, the, this left investment, these people, this person is uh, Philip Cooper, and the right hand side, probably you know the answer, is a Steve Smale. So that was a couple of years ago, uh, uh, six years ago, they, pro, uh, they proposed so called the uh, Fuka Smale Proking Model. So the model is like this. Uh, so here, xi is the position of the ice particle, vi is the velocity of ice particle. Here, we assume that all particles have the same mass, say equal to one, so it's a homogeneous region. Then, this, equal, this is a just a time derivative of position is the velocity, and the mass is one, one times the acceleration is the force. They just took the, uh, this kind of internal force. So the force is basically the sum of the uh, relative velocity because i is u, j is your neighbor. So you take the velocity difference, take average uh, weighted sum of this relative velocity. So for example, in one space dimension, for example, if vi is what what r1, then if your neighbor's velocity is a larger than u, if faster than u, then this is a positive. So the, the contribution, so then you have to increase your velocity to align with your neighbor. Inversely, if your neighbor's speed is smaller than your speed, in one space dimension case, then this is negative. Then you have to decelerate your speed to align with your velocity. So this model, this simple model, is already built in this uh, this proping mechanism. It's a simple average of your relative velocities. And to side, it's just uh, a so-called communication rate. So in their work, they take this uh, regular algebraic decay uh, communication rate. So if you are, if you are far away, the the rate is smaller. Okay, it's not says it makes sense, right? If you are far away then uh, the effect will be smaller. Uh, so, then what do you mean by the uh, forking uh, for this part of the model? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. This, oh. So this K is so-called coupling strength. And it's the number of particles. So if K, later on you will see that the K uh, gives you the decay rate of the flocking. Okay, so the K is coupling rate. K is larger than more more strong coupling. So what I mean by the flocking of this multi-agent system means means s type flocking. So so first, in order to say in order to call flock. First, the, the diameter of this uh, position should be bounded, right? So we are going the same flow here, but we don't call someone in soul. Uh, of course, it's a finite distance, but we don't call it as a flow. Okay? So we need to have this, uh, uh, and also velocity alignment. So, Asymptotically, as equals infinity, the relative velocity approaches to zero. Okay. So, in fact, this model. Oops. Uh, if you look at here, it's a translation area. So, if it, uh, what I mean by that, if you add uh, any constant to vi, because it's uh, defined the difference, so it's in area. So, so this guy has a uh, the total mass, total number of particles is conserved, total momentum is also conserved. So, so without also generality, you can assume that the sum of the, uh, the position is zero, sum of the velocity is zero. Otherwise, you take out the average motion, you look at the fluctuation around the average motion, then you, you can say that. All right. So what Kukosmail proved, actually before Kukosmail, there are other mathematical models 
They like a teaching mother, and even before that, there are many empirical, uh, phenomenological mothers. So the, the physicists or engineers do some analysis, but their analysis is mostly based on numerics, no exact theorem. So the Kubasner's uh, main contribution here, they, they provide some analytic model. You can prove the exact theorem. So, so here I define the uh, gamma null to be this, uh, this quantity, the relative distance and to know, lambda null to be this, and psi is here. So their theorem tells you if this two beta, remember two beta is an equal array, as R was infinity, if two beta less than one, then it's, uh, it decays slowly, okay? So in that case, no matter what, your initial configuration is, we always have a fork in previous sets. On the other hand, if two beta greater than equal to one, you need a condition on initial configuration, okay? Even if they, they, they fork each other, but if the, their uh, influence is a little weak, then you might have a problem. Okay? So this simple model exhibits some kind of phase transition phenomena depending on the decay rate. And later on, actually the first work improved the forking estimate was done with Aita Tanoa and Jango Ryu, but uh, just a few years ago also, uh, you can, for example, if you allow, if you define x infinity norm to be just L to norm and the maximum of this L to norm, so it's an L infinity L to combination, then if initial configuration satisfy this, okay, remember case given parameter, x now this is initial data, psi is a given. I don't assume any special answers for communication way. As long as initial configuration satisfy this, you can prove that the, the position somehow is bounded, and then the velocity, L infinity norm of the velocity goes to zero exponentially fast. Okay? So compared to Kupasmir's work, because Kupasmir's work, based on this n to norm, basically. So as n goes to infinity, this region cannot be, we cannot use this region for n goes to infinity. Because as n goes to infinity, this n to norm may grow up. And also, this region, is depending on the special form of the communication wave. So what I can improve is, we don't use any special form of the psi. Of course, we need a positivity and also non-increasing property of psi as in terms of R, but you can prove uh, the theorem. Of course, this is sufficient theorem. But still, we don't know what's the sufficient necessary condition. Then why I'm crazy about this simple Cooper's smear model? Well, this Cooper's smear model is not a physical model, but they just Cooper smear just wrote down the model. They can prove something, some theorems. However, if you start from this more mechanical model, P is the force potential. So you have a mechanical model. It's a, it's a, uh, it's also on the uh, real line with mass epsilon. Okay. Then you simply take the one more time derivative of the second model, then you can, uh, from here to, you can get this, right? You take time derivative, okay? Then P double prime and derivative inside by chain loop here, then. And then formally, let epsilon goes to zero, which means uh, zero mass limit. Then this term is gone. Then you can derive so-called the Kupus lemma. Surprisingly, you can derive it in this way from the mechanical model. Of course, this, this is a singular limit, but it can be done more rigorously by using this Kruzhkov, uh, this Kipper theory. So that has been done with uh, Marshall Slender. Like. Okay, another interesting.
interesting feature of the Fukushima model. There is a similar uh, subset, so-called synchronization, close to the forking. Uh, here, forking is the uh, is a concentration of the velocity. But if you look at the concentration of uh, phase frequency some of some oscillatory system, like your happy, okay. So if you if you meet, uh, for example, man meet or some beautiful woman, then your happy is beating more widely. So those kind of uh, phenomena is for synchronization. So one of the uh, kind of uh, fundamental model in synchronization is called Pramuk model. Uh, Pramuk is a Japanese physicist. It's like this. So the theta is the phase of the oscillator. So K is again this coupling constant. So if K is zero, then means no coupling. Omega is so called natural frequency. So it's given from your uh, from God or from your mother, parents. Okay, it's inherited. So without coupling, those waves just rotate with their natural frequency. But if you think, if you employ this coupling, sign coupling, then all of a sudden these oscillators flock together. Okay, they move with the same velocity, etc. Again, this first sort of model, you take one more time derivative. In the meantime, you define set i that equals the frequency omega i. You take derivative of this guy. So this is omega i, the omega i dot. This is constant. Then k of n, summation of sine becomes a cosine, and you have that. So it looks similar to the Kukosmer model, except this communication rate can be negative. Because the focus metal now always have a, this attractive force, but sometimes it's better to have a reversive force also. So this one has it, but this is on the circle. So the reversion on the circle is another kind of attraction. So it's basically the same thing. So from these two reasons, I, I became more crazy about this model. Now, so far we have a finite dimension, finite uh, agent, n is fixed, right? So what if n goes to infinity? Of course, <coughs> at this moment, the engineering level, we only can control one or two, it's a small number of n, but we are mathematicians, so we can study it. So n goes to infinity, then the so-called infinite limit, or n, so in that case, uh, we need to study so-called the velocity distribution function because even some particles at the same physical condition, you might have uh, lots of particles uh, moving different velocity. So in order to describe this uh, this uh, physical uh, model, you have to consider you have to introduce another variable, so-called the velocity momentum variable. So you have to think about the free, the some function of the free space. So that's the uh, the velocity distribution function. So the question is, from Foucault's model here, is a n particle model, n goes to infinity, then by using some physical arguments, uh, so-called DDCPY hierarchy, you can derive, uh, formally derive this so-called Russell type model. And, but this formal derivation can be done rigorously. So that has been done with uh, Jango Ryu from Duke University, 2009. And so some formal derivation was done uh, with joint work with Ayla Kalwa from Yale. Of course, uh, this derivation can be done rigorously because the precise is regular. If it was precise singular, for example, like all over R, flow potential, etc. Uh, still open problem. Okay. So, but I only need the easy case at this moment. So, for for this uh, derived uh, kinetic model, you can prove some theorem. That means uh, first, I told you I'm going to address the uh, well this issue at the last time we had here. So, if uh, for any finite time t, if it initial 
distribution has a compactly supported and the C1 regular and bounded, this is C1 norm, then you can prove the they just classical smooth solution to the kinetic model. So and also the existence of major value solution, because eventually there will be a forking in the velocity, that means uh, in the velocity your solution approach to a so-called Dirac mass type function. So if so if you study the, the major value solution also can be done. That has been done with Django Rio again. Okay, so how to prove the the floppy estimate? Okay, <coughs> if this is a full model, then it should have a floppy. Okay. So, in order to measure floppy, I I we employ this functional. You see, is the average uh, velocity because the momentum is conserved. So. Initial momentum is conserved, so the this average velocity is is uh, is is conserved, is invariant along the flow. So you consider some kind of velocity fluctuation, like temperature in, from the Boltzmann equation, or variance in this way. Then you can show that this variance <coughs> approach to zero. Exponentially fast or algebraically, depending on the decay rate of the Cooper-Smith communication rate. Okay. So, uh, from the kinetic model, now uh, remember in the kinetic model, how many variables? So, uh, for example, t is one dimension, x is three dimension, which are three. Three is uh, three dimension, so the the the, the independent value is same dimension. Okay, so numerically to to solve this uh, high dimension PDE is very costly. So um, what you can do, you take the moment in the velocity of this equation to reduce the dimension of of independent variable. Uh, that that. So you have a kinetic model. You introduce a low, low u, low e. So for local mass density, momentum, uh, it's a type of momentum density, energy density. That means uh, you multiply the, in the equation one v v square and integrate with respect to the velocity. Then you'll get this kind of power there. This hydrodynamic model, of course, is not close model because, for example, this Q is called heat flux, uh, defined here. In order to define heat flux, you need the third moment of the velocity, but you only have a second moment, so you, you have to keep going on. So it's not close, close the system. It's, however, however, if the flow is close to Flow is state already, okay, so it's equilibrium state, then somehow you can assume your solution, uh, your velocity distribution function is a uh, low times the, this uh, drag uh, delta function, okay? So it's for monokinetic ansatz. Under this monokinetic ansatz, the stress tensor and heat flux are zero. Therefore, our previous hydrodynamic model becomes like a pressureless gas dynamics with no local force in, uh, which is a flocking force. So even <laughs> psi equal to one, then it's overall communication, this model reduced to pressureless gas with uh, damping. Okay, so uh, with the phase one here and uh, one E, we, we, we study the existence of weak entropy solution of the series of quickly. Uh, why I mean, this, from the Kukosmer model, uh, for example, this pressureless oil equation, here at this Chinese Academy Science School in Beijing, they are kind of pioneer in this, or some French group. So this uh, so-called pressureless gas dynamics is related to the uh, the formation of large-scale structure of the universe. 
this is a jagovich russian mathematician jagovich studied the formation of large structure in the universe if you believe you have a homogeneous universe how this homogeneous universe evolved to this this uh, structure uh, say or has something in relation okay so you can again you can do some uh, asymptotic analysis for this uh, so let me so you can prove the uh, similar uh, uh, the floating estimate here now so far we only consider the particle model at different levels of course the particles cannot live in the vacuum right it should like for example the birds fly through the air so then it should interact with the fluid gas okay or fish swim inside uh, along the leaf, along the water then interact with the uh, incompressible fluid so you have to think about the interaction between the particle system and the fluid so like here so this is a milling phenomenon still using the proper smell model you cannot describe this milling phenomenon so that's what the uh, uh, space question so uh, people are trying to what kind of force mechanism to add the Cooper Cinema model to produce this milling phenomenon. That's also the question, research area in this protein business. So, for example, for the, this coupling between the particle system and the fluid, for the particle, we, we use the kinetic model, and then fluid, we use the uh, incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. And then coupling it through the so-called drag force, U minus sine. Okay. So this is a drag force. So the coupling is through the drag force. Uh, so then again, these are typical P questions: well coordinates, as the target behavior, etc. Uh, so you can under if initial data on a periodic domain, that's a technical reason, but if the initial data is smooth and good enough, then you can prove the existence of strong solution or classical solution. So this model is well course, okay? That's what I want to say. Okay, you can prove the emergence of working from this model, this top model. So let me, <laughs> let me skip. Under certain conditions, initial energy and the viscosity. Now, you want to, you want to ask, then what can you do with this uh, protein model? Okay. With uh, some real application, can be done or not? Of course, uh, at this moment, I didn't do any real uh, applications, but last couple of years, I, I tried to do some possible theoretical application of this super smell mechanism to other areas. So the first application is so-called formation control of unmanned aerial vehicles. So this is a joint work with uh, uh, Hyunjin Kim from uh, Aeronautic Department of South National University. Because the super smell model uh, has just a translation this, uh, this motion is uh, equilibrium, so it doesn't give you any particular formation. So, but the engineering from the engineering viewpoint, we want to have uh, some particular formation. Okay. So, so here I add, uh, of course, uh, I add a new mechanism which is complicated, but this mechanism is based on some physical algorithm. Okay, it's not any mechanism. It, it has a certain derivation. Uh, like like here, it looks complicated, but this is a disruptive system. You can find energy, etc. <coughs> so uh, this is a the simulation result of, of previous demo model. So you can prove some formation of control depending on the number of H particles. Of course, if we 
if if I'm more ambitious, then I want to do this kind of air show using a many air vehicles. Uh, imagine if we can do this air show using this robot a many air vehicles. You will wonder, right? So maybe it's new for cartoon also, this movie. Uh, of course, uh, this is, has not been done yet, but this is what we can imagine. Uh, the second application that I have been working with uh, sociologist, uh, John Han uh, Gang is a sociologist from Yonsei University. Actually, he's uh, my classmate in undergraduate at SMU. He studied math and switched to sociology and became a sociology professor in Yonsei University. So we try to understand in, the, in our society why the cult different cultural classes appear. Okay? We have middle class, we have upper class, we have lower class, etc. Why this kind of demonstration uh, <laughs> exists, etc. Using this Kukosmel algorithm. Because be before Kukosmel model, you have only attractive force. Now you have the repulsive force. Okay? Then you have last many clustering phenomena appears. So we try to somehow explain uh, the culture, how do cultural classes emerge from attraction and depression. Of course, this is a theoretical work. We, don't, we didn't do any empirical work study yet. And also we try, again, we try to apply this idea to financial modeling. So, uh, so Okay, I didn't like, so first we try to apply this personal idea to the credit market, okay? Credit audience index. So that's the joint work with uh, Gisa Lee from Louisville, University of Louisville, is my classmate, an undergraduate. And uh, Hyung Woo Kim from Thais, the financial department there. Uh, so the paper will appear, quantitative finance. It takes forever, <laughs> three years. And the second, recently, I'm working, also working with uh, the Agile Financial Group. The head is over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hyung Wok Bae and uh, Yong Shik Kim and my former student, we try to apply this flocking algorithm to the, the, the flocking of the stochastic volatility, etc. So, so far, we are doing something. This time. Of course, uh, uh, just a theoretical work, no empirical work yet. And also, we try to apply floating idea to the biology. So here is uh, called termite, is white ants. White ants, white ants is different from the usual ants. They are more sensitive to some chemicals. So. So for example, if you, on the paper, if you draw the circle using a robot hand and put the termites, then they move to the, the circle and, and uh, rotate it around the circle. Okay? It behaves, uh, it shows some floppy phenomena. So just for curiosity, we want to, we, we did for this uh, rectangle, triangle, etc. how the termite can detect the singularity of geometry. As you can imagine, there is a traffic jam on the vertices. Okay. So we try to explain these kind of things using the Cooper smell type modified model. So it's a, some of the uh, numeric simulation based on some model, uh, like this. Oh, by the way, this, this work, I'm doing with a statistician of my university, you know, Johan Kim, me, and some, uh, someone born from the pharmacy department. Okay. How can I do this? Because they are all my, we are from the same town. Okay, so we are related somehow. <laughs> and also my uh, PhD student, Jin Zhang. So still, the flocking is important in this collaboration as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the emergent behaviors in termite traffic flow from flower polygons. So, so we are writing some paper on it. 
Um, so, final slide, last slide. Challenge flapping problems. So, what we know, outside the world, space is curved, right? If you have a mass, then mass is sort of the general curvature from Einstein general relativity. So somehow we have to study the floating on the curved space. This is a real challenge between geometry and dynamics, the PD or the dynamical system. So I, I took this picture from cartoon. We have two ends, okay? So the question is, simple question is, can this can these two ends flow together? Okay? So I'm asking design some mathematical models and prove theorems. Okay? So it's the interaction between geometry and the dynamical system. So here's the below. I presented how the floating phenomena can be explained through simple uh, mechanism, Fukushima mechanism, for example, and the Fukushima flocking algorithm seems to me very, extremely useful to model many collective behaviors of complex system. So after I studied the flocking phenomena, flipping theory last five years, it seems to me everything looks like flocking to me. <laughs> Thank you for attention. So it's basically it's on the motion 
on the circle. So then they assume that the change of heading angle is the average of your neighbors. So they, so the Cooper smell was motivated by this uh, and model. Again, the Vichy model itself is not derived from physical principle, but normally if you look at your neighbor, you just not try to follow your neighbor's behavior. That's, a, that's the, their philosophy. Yeah. Yes. Are you planning some empirical study or research? Uh, yeah. So, uh, actually, for example, this financial application, uh, I'm trying to do some real uh, empirical stuff with uh, this Arjun guru. And uh, for the space, I, will, I have a specific, specific plan for that. <laughs> and yeah, so that's what I, uh, but at this moment, more theoretical uh, issue. Okay. I know, so simple question, like uh, when you measure the books or like a uh, Russell type equation, right. because we didn't measure the size of and also the shape of the body. No, no. Here, basically, basically one of the assumptions is the particle is a point particle. It doesn't have a shape. It doesn't have a... So, but of course, if you want real application, then you have to sh consider shape of the particles, uh, of the agent, but or you can think of this uh, point to be the uh, uh, center of mass of the agent. But it's, it's, at this moment, no consideration of such as explicit uh, information on the geometry of the agent. Okay. No more question. Okay. Best thing, Sergey. <laughs>